Hi everyone, I'm Adrian Glover, I'm a Merit Researcher at the Natural History Museum in London and I'm very happy to briefly present to you Deep Sea ID, our app for deep sea field identification that we developed some years ago. Um, so Deep Sea ID is uh, jointly created by myself, uh, Nick Higgs and Tammy Horton at the National Oceanography Centre. Uh, and it's really two things in some ways, it is uh, an iOS and Android app that you can download uh, on your devices, uh, just search on the App Store for Deep Sea ID, uh, and it's also uh, effectively uh, the backbone of it is a website, a database uh, hosted by the World Register of Marine Species called the World Register of Deep Sea Species, where there are now twenty eight thousand and a few uh, deep sea species recorded as a thematic database uh, in worms, the World Register of Marine Species. Uh, so it is essentially a, an app version. Uh, of that, uh, but it has a unique feature which the website doesn't have, uh, in that it has a uh, a large number of uh, beautiful images of deep sea species, particularly screen grabs and Im images uh, from ROVs uh, and some specimen photo photography as well uh, of macrofauna and megafauna from the deep sea. Uh, so it's extremely useful in certain situations, and I'll I'll demonstrate that uh, now. Uh, but it's important here to understand uh, that the two things work together uh, and it is a few years since we last updated it and I'll talk about the development of it uh, in just a moment. So without further ado, I'll just uh, sort of give you a bit of a demo of how it works. Um, so yeah, essentially uh, the, the best way to visualise the use of this is in a ROV control room or potentially looking at in-situ images on the seafloor. It's not really intended as, at this point anyway, as a field guide you'd use in the laboratory for identifying species. For that, you still really have to use original literature. Uh, there are no field guides to the clarion clipperton zone fauna, for example. Uh, but the, the the concept is essentially you're in the ROV control room or looking at images of seafloor animals taken by an AUV or other in-situ device and want to get uh, um, start to identify them. Uh, and this is you know the, your first port of call because it has images of uh, large things that you might commonly encounter. So you load up the app, um, and I'll just pause here briefly. It has a very um, easy to use interface where you can scroll through the taxonomic hierarchy of organisms. Uh, and typically, you know, on a on a deep sea sort of expedition, you might know roughly uh, what phylum, or maybe even better, what class or family your thing belongs to, and you want to quickly check the spelling or to find out what it is. Uh, this is the, the app that allows you to do that. Um, and particularly important, I'll just highlight um, this, this one feature sorry, here, uh, is that uh, it has a very nice and easy to use feature which shows you where you are in the phylogenetic tree, including uh, common names, actually. Uh, so for those who are less familiar with the names of all the different biological groups, you can, you can quickly work out where you are and what other things your animal might be, and I'll show a little bit more of that in a second. Um, as I said earlier, all the information is sourced from words, uh, uh, and that's a thematic database which is maintained uh, by a very large number of editors. All of those editors have the ability to tag or untag species as belonging to deep sea. Uh, it's got a fantastic, very fast uh, search interface um, where you can very quickly, as you can see here, type in a few letters of a species name and find it. And this is incredibly useful. Uh, and of course, all this works offline, so there's no need for internet access of any kind. The entire thing is stored on your device. It's incredibly useful just for checking spellings of things, uh, which many of us have to do frequently, with, particularly with Latin names, uh, even those of us who are familiar with them. Uh, that's an extremely useful feature. Uh, and you'll see in a minute, that there's, a, there's a kind of a typical page that you get, and it even has all of the uh, data on um, the common names as well, which is rather fun. Uh, and there's an example of that there. The what's being demoed just there is the slideshow feature. So, so for example, you you know that the thing in the ROV image is a crustacean, but you really have no idea what uh, what this will allow you to do is to quickly scroll through and just look at a whole bunch of different pictures of crustacea. Uh, and that's incredibly useful. Not I mean, obviously very unlikely to identify the thing to species. Uh, but just knowing roughly what family things is, uh, is incredibly good, and particularly for beginners and those that are less familiar with the 
uh, incredible diversity of deep sea fauna. Uh, and there you've got nice images on your device as well. Uh, so that uh, that feature is great. Um, we actually now, um, uh, this is a little bit out of date, we are now up to version 1.2 uh, and we would like to develop version 1.3. Uh, so the future development, obviously, it's an extremely useful thing to have. Um, it is quite simple um, as it is. It's not a we didn't. It wasn't a huge, a vast amount of development funding that went into it. Uh, it was funded originally by the Indie Project, which came to an end. Um, it still works really well, I mean, thanks to our developer Andrew Powers, uh, the, the interface he created. It, it seems to have stood the test of time. Uh, but we want uh, to try and find more development funding, uh, in particular. Um, to get to the next version, we need about roughly a you know, ballpark figure of about 13k USD uh, software development, and that would give a new version that works across all devices, updated database, um, and uh, we have we have already sourced uh, 200 images that we want to put in there and obtain the copyrights and the images and, uh, and the permissions, uh, but we need that uh, software development funding to get it to get it out, uh, and then we have a, a tentative yeah. version 1.5. Um, which is uh, uh, an additional 20k development, I think, and that would be an additional database uh, and then actually hiring someone to source an additional set of images. Um, we want to continue to develop it uh, very much longer term. You know, there could be new things you could do, you could, uh, you know, with greater amounts of funding, um, it could be more dynamically linked to the database, for example. Uh, but we just want it to be a useful um, thing to have with you uh, when you're at sea, trying to identify deep sea animals. Uh, and so if you are interested in sponsoring this, uh, please contact me. Um, yeah, that will be uh, the quickest way of ensuring that we get the next version out. Uh, my email address is there. And of course, you'll, you'll find me easily just by Googling. Uh, thanks for listening. I apologize I'm not available uh, for this, this workshop this week. Um, yeah, uh, but um, I'm very much looking forward to getting any comments. Uh, I'm very happy to reply on email or any other means. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch. Uh, so thanks very much indeed.